Project Looking Glass S4 Area 51. So this is a technology that allows assets to look into the past or the present or the future of events. That's what Project Looking Glass is. And there's also uh, various Stargate, Stargate Way portals technology that they worked on in the Alice in Wonderland project in level 4.2 of Area 51, or also dubbed S4. Alice's Floor, level 4.2. And some of the things on this level on the left-hand side were the Einstein Rosen Bridge promoter transport pad jump room where people would stand on two various jumping pads and they would be transported somewhere off planet or to locations on the planet. So that's uh, teleportation devices in the jump room. Also there was Project Looking Glass where um, people could see the past, the present, or the future with the Looking Glass technology. Also on the left-hand picture, um, there is the man-made stargates, which were reverse engineered from mirror image Sumerian cylinder seals. And in this picture on the left-hand side, the two yellow um, jump, jump, um, jump technology, the two cylinders, yellow cylinders that are glowing, they're the ones creating the portal. So that's the um, the man-made stargates that, that are in this picture, which were created from the Sumerian cylinder seals. Ironically, um, these portal technology, it actually looks like the cylinders themselves, which is very interesting to me. They're the ones that are creating the portal. Also on the right hand side is the, again, the looking glass device, which is round and it has this kind of like bluish white energy coming off of the device that activates it. And there's also a man sitting um, nearby and he's wearing a um, sort of like a visor and the data, he's looking at the data that he's receiving from the device. What he's looking at could either be in the past, present, or the future. Seeing events, it's like time traveling or remote viewing. And and he's being monitored and all of the information is being recorded, what he's seeing. It's all being recorded on audio and video. It, it's, it's data telemetry that's being received from the mind of the asset that's that's using the looking glass device. And it's all being recorded and monitored so it could be reviewed later. And um, whoever's running Alice's floor in, in Area 51, they'll be able to see the asset's um, information about the past, present, or future, whatever was recorded. Level 2 or 4-2 was known as Alice's Floor. This specific floor contained a laboratory for weapons research and development, three boardrooms, and provisions for emergency supplies. Also located on level 4-2 were two specific areas which contained components for Project Psychic. Level 4-2 was also the location of Project Looking Glass. This device utilized six composite electromagnetic fields and a height adjustable rotating cylinder, which is injected with a specific type of gas. The entire assembly can be rotated 90 degrees from the horizontal axis. This allows scientists to warp the local fabric of space-time both forward or backwards, by long or short distances relative to the present time. The Project Looking Glass device was used to predict the potential probability of future events. Once the device is, is tuned properly, 
Images of probable future events are projected in open space within the fields similar to a hologram. The data output of the device, images and in some cases sounds, were then captured via high-resolution audio-video capture devices. If multiple probabilities of the same event were displayed, they could be deinterlaced by use of specific software platforms. Next to the Project Looking Glass device were two transport pads which could teleport physical matter or humans from one location to the other, to the other instantly, but not always reliably and with certain disastrous outcomes during testing phases. The Project Looking Glass device had electromagnetic field spheres and it looked like a, a toroid donut ring that would rotate to create the electromagnetic fields in order to look backwards in time or forwards in time to create the slipstream event horizon to, to be able to look at various events happening in time, whether past, present, or future. And the device is capable of, of looking into the past, present, or future events. Um, they mostly used it to look into the future of events because they wanted to see what would happen. Um, but the device is capable of going backwards in time or even looking at present events that are about to happen. That haven't happened yet, but will, like closer to the present than the future future of events. So, but they they did have um, some issues with with looking with looking more into the past or present present. Um, they mostly used the device to look into the future. That was the easiest thing to do. So sometimes there were malfunctions in the beginning when they first started using the device. So they focused on looking at one one event in time. Um, just just to not overload the, the device itself. So they did do various experiments with this technology. Um, not just looking into the future, but also the past and the near present. Five concurrent programs were also being conducted during the Alice in Wonderland projects. One named Project Galileo dealt with the propulsion system of extraterrestrial in future terrestrial vehicles. Another program termed Project Psychic, which relates to a weapons platform. The third project, known as Project Looking Glass, dealt with time distortion. More specifically, this program dealt with the physics of seeing the effects of an artificially produced gravity wave on time. The overall umbrella designation for the study of anything having to do with extraterrestrial biological entities and their interaction with humans on Earth was known as Project Aquarius. The fourth project was a separate weapons program developed as a second generation research program from Project Psychic. The other program involved a suit of biological defense operations. The looking glass device at area S Four, level 4-2 four used a barrel housed within the center hole of a donut-shaped structure. During operation, argon gas was sprayed into the center of the rotating barrel. A number of powerful electromagnets encircled the barrel and as the power is fluctuated into the magnets and the orientation of the magnets is changed, it dials into the probabilities within hyperspace, contacting wormholes to various probabilistic universes. During the early looking glass operations in the 1970s, the scientists working on the program quickly found out that the, that the device was multifunctional. Through a variation of power settings and alignments, the project's looking glass device could produce images. It was soon determined that these images dealt with future events which might take place on Earth. It was soon determined what events would be 
causation events for the ultimate splitting of humanity into what could become the J-Rods and the Orion beings. That information from the Looking Glass was supported by the direct testimony of both the J-Rods and Orion beings according to their written and oral histories. Then it was further supported by observation of data from the quantum cube gift Orion Cube given to President Eisenhower in 1954. According to scientists, the looking glass devices and stargates were dismantled in an effort to protect humanity based upon the totality of information collected. There were also several other efforts commissioned by Majestic to derail the potential sequence of events that would have led up to the catastrophe. There was another looking glass device located elsewhere on the, on the Nevada test site range. The earlier version of that looking glass device was viewed by Will Uhouse in the 1970s. Two devices were required operating at the same settings for either of the two devices to emit sound associated with the probable events they were presenting as data. Scientists could not specify why two devices were required to produce sound. A flipbook was worn on the arms of those directly involved with the field operations of Stargate devices. Within S4, all settings for the looking glass were achieved from the control room, so no flipbooks were required. This consisted of drawings and specific galactic positioning codes which were used to program the Stargate devices so that personnel could accurately determine their destination point once the device was in operation. Sources of information Stargates through the looking glass www.thelivingmoon.com slash 42 Stargate slash zero three files slash project underscore looking underscore glass underscore lan l dot html the looking glass technology was apparently used to look backward and forward in time using the consciousness of an operator as a type of steering mechanism the operator would sit in a chair that was apparently recovered from a downed extraterrestrial craft capable of interfacing with consciousness directly. When the device was turned on, strong toroidal fields of energy cycled about a pouch of water at the center, which acted as a sort of resonator for in-streaming energies from the point of focus maintained by the operator. The data was collected and projected onto video monitors at incredible speeds, which later needed to be deinterlaced to, to reveal discernible images. What's interesting is that the biases of the operator would have a direct effect on the images collected. For example, if one were to look back to the times Jesus crucifixion, if the person doing so was an atheist, they may not see anything at all. But if the person was a Christian, they may see the infamous crucifixion event. This is suggestive of a time-space mechanic in the universe, wherein the human mind is able to navigate through time itself. The work of Dewey B. Larson and his reciprocal systems theory provides the basis for this interpretation. Briefly, the universe, as described by Larson, is broken up into two physical regions, as defined by motion. Below the speed of light, motion operates in three dimensions of space in one dimension of time. Above the speed of light, motion operates in one dimension of space in three dimensions of time. As bizarre as that sounds, the mind is uniquely equipped to navigate in time which is able to access memories of the past, gain awareness of events in the present, conceive of future possibilities, and even imagine alternative events that, that, that did not actually happen. In other words, the human mind can select a point of focus, just like in remote viewing, and receive information from the store of memories 
made during experience. If a mind is properly trained, it could be used to access non-experiential data in the same way one can recall a memory. The looking glass device seems to be capable of the same type of process to actually access a data stream from any conceivable location in space or time, steering via the consciousness of an operator. Accordingly to the testimony of Burridge, the technology was provided to the human race during Sumerian times when an advanced contingent of future humans went back in time and provided that culture assistance after a cataclysm known as the Deluge. The Sumerian cylinder seals were encoded with plans to build the looking glass device. Earlier advents of the project saw the development of an actual portal that an individual could move through to jump in time. According to accounts provided by captured beings known in the program as P-45s, future humans 45,000 years into the future, the Earth was destroyed by massive cataclysms around the year 2012. This is apparently be because looking glass devices were actively being used during a major celestial alignment, which overloaded the organic energy grid of the planet. Birch further claims that the, that the device has been dismantled as a result of discovering two probable timelines one of which is the cataclysm described by the captured being. An attempt was made to look into the future, but no concrete data was able to be received past the infamous date of December 21st, 2012, suggesting that this date is a nexus point in time, whereby either timeline one or timeline two would gain momentum. On last report, Burridge suggested that timeline number one, the positive timeline, had an over 80% likelihood of coming to fruition. Sources of information, Project Looking Glass dash time lensing technology used to look into the past and future. www.stillnessandthestorm.com slash 2015 slash 12 slash project looking glass time lensing dot html all the information provided in this presentation about the project looking glass technology was found on the internet from two different internet resources this information um, comes mainly from internet research material it does not come from my own research. What I did in this presentation was I knew about the looking glass technology, but what I wanted to do is research it in, in its historical records of, of what researchers and insiders have come forward with information about Project Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland Area 51, what type of projects went on there. So this, this research material comes from two different sources, which are very good. Um, they're the most plausible sources that I found, and I cited them while I was reading the information that's accompanied by the images, which also come from the internet. So um, all my information about the research is cited for Project Looking Glass and um, please go to the referenced cited material to read further about Project Looking Glass and thank you so much and namaste.